Hello and welcome to Modkit Mayhem. This week we're finishing the GR1 Harrier FX172 kit. Basically I built it straight from the box and the plan behind this video, the idea anyway, was to create a video where, that showed you the process building straight from the box, nothing else, keeping it as basic as possible. Simple as that, just using what you get, which is the glue and the paints and the paintbrushes. I did have to cheat a little bit at the end, but uh, on the whole, it's pretty much 99% straight from the box. So um, I think it's a good video for somebody who's not done kits before or is getting back into kits. So hopefully it's helpful in that sort of, in that sense. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll link below the some of the tools that I used to create this so you can you can get them yourself um, from from Amazon. Yeah, enjoy the video. Thanks very much. Cheers. So I sprayed the entire Harrier in a grey undercoat. I'd filled the areas that I didn't want spraying with some foam, just standard washing up kind of foam, and then some masking tape over the cockpit so I didn't spray over all the, the interior that I painted there. Once that was done, I then marked out the camouflage, exactly the same as the process as I did with the Spitfire, and uh, just using the graphics on the back of the box, I marked out where the grey and green areas would be. It doesn't have to be absolutely accurate, but get it as close as you can. And then I had to paint the interior cockpit black because that had been covered with the masking tape. So it needed where the canopy was going, it needed that to be black. And also the front kind of where the head up display is, the um, and the dashboard sort of area. And it's called a dashboard, but the cockpit front. So that needs to be black as well. So just paint all around that area. That kind of yeah looks quite tidy when you've done that. Paint the head up display as well, just a little bit of the glass area. You keep like one pane of glass for where it's reflected up, but around the edges where it's actually attached to the cockpit, just paint that area black. I painted the lightest colour first, which is the underneath. So it's kind of um, off-white, cream-white. I don't know the exact colour. I'll, um, I'll find that. And then, yeah, just apply that. But the thing is, again, with this paint, it's incredibly thick when you get it. You need to water it down quite a lot. The best thing to do is get an old piece of plastic and put some water down on it, take some paint and mix it up and get it to a kind of consistency where it will paint on properly. Again, this car paint absorbs paint, so you'll have to do multiple passes in terms of layers. You'll see the first layer actually just disappeared. It pretty much was back to grey. So at first you're thinking, oh my word, how much paint am I going to need to do this? But for every coat that you do after, it gets a bit easier. Then once I've done that, I went on to the grey. It's a light grey, you can, it's just a bit lighter than the actual car paint, which is, has a sort of more blue to it. Yeah, apply that down. This actually paints on easier than the cream white that was underneath. You don't need as many passes, but again, I think I did about three to four kind of layers with these paints. It gets easier every time. The actual Harrier looks quite nice in the two-tone grey. <laughs> I think that's the trickiest part of this whole kit in terms of painting is getting a consistency right with the acrylic paints because if you painted them straight from the pot you'd actually just ruin the kit. There's no way it'd look good at all, it'd just smudge and be, be a hideous job. So to do anything different just make sure you water down the paint much, much tidier. Right, on to green. Green actually painted better as well, as good as the grey. Be careful, it does dry quite quick and you'll see where I painted on the top there. It actually dried and it leaves a kind of a streak, a mark. So you have to um, just be aware of that, not painting too far ahead of yourself, just paint sections and that way you won't get any kind of drying of the paint that leaves marks. It didn't really matter in the end because I was doing multiple passes. Like after the third coat you didn't see it. There you can see it there just on the, uh, on the top there. Once it was it was going on, it was it was fine. This green paint actually went on really nice, and uh, it was starting to look really, you know, like a proper British aircraft. Once I'd got the grey and green on there, sort of got that sort of Vulcan look. I actually remember these these flying over when I was little, and uh, the, the Jaguars, and then later the Tornadoes, Cold War jets. So here you can see how thick the paint actually is. There's no way you're going to paint that. It's like tar, so you you know you've got to mix it down with something. 
onto the rocket pods these were all black and then you use the black as an undercoat to paint on the silver the canopy is the only place that i actually painted the paint neat i didn't water it down at all because to stop the kind of waxing effect which you get i had to apply it quite thick so yeah just use that straight from the tub when you're doing that just to, to paint the canopy painted the canopy by hand just because I'm trying to keep with the out of box kind of style of this whole kit <laughs> experiment and uh, it wasn't easy but yeah, it looks good it looks really good when you do do it so just steady hand and that was using the humber brushes as well if you look after them or well, don't dip them in the paint right up to the top just wash them every time don't let paint dry on them they, they, they work fine After the grey and green was done, I then went around and just tidied up any sort of areas where it was looking a bit untidy with the grey or the green. Once that was done, I went on to the rocket pods. They, they dried enough now so I could put the silver on there. You'll have to do multiple passes on this as well. I think I did three coats until I knocked the paint pot over. <laughs> I have to have a disaster on every kit I build. After that, it was onto the, like a gun metal silver. It's a lot trickier to paint on, and I think I did two, two passes on this maybe. So it's the back of the rocket pods and the blast shields on the side of the aircraft. It's actually quite a nice silver when it's dries. After that, I took some black and watered it down and painted some of the detail areas. So there's like a little panel on the back of the aircraft that is black and also the camera lenses that go on the front of the nose. That was it for the painting. All done. So it was onto the, sort of the stickers or the decals, decals. I must admit it's been a while since I've done this many decals, decals. Uh, I just think I should call them stickers. Stickers onto an aircraft. The Spitfire was relatively easy apart from some of the panel lines. This, yeah. It, it was kind of uh, a shock to remember how much effort you have to put into doing this. A lot of patience and, you know, taking your time is definitely warranted on these. I found I had to, had to use some deco softener, uh, which comes from Vallejo. I'll put the link below and also a fixer because some of the decals wouldn't actually conform to the shape of the aircraft because the Harry is quite a bubbly rounded aircraft especially on those intakes, the actual roundel. I couldn't fit it for some reason. Maybe if I'd have used a warmer water, that was the only thing I could think of after. It might have kind of conformed a bit better to the shape, but as it stands, it was it was really hard to get it lined up without it kind of slightly crimpling out in certain areas. So I used a decal softener to shape it and it took you know various coats to do that. And then using a cotton bud, I rounded the sticker into place it took a bit of work and i think if you hadn't done kits before you'd find that quite challenging and maybe a bit frustrating if there was anything i was going to say with getting these starter kits get some fixer and uh, softener because they will save you massive amount of headache and stress also another good thing is they the, the softener actually has um if you get a little bit of silvering which is where the air bubbles form underneath the sticker the softener kind of seems to get rid of most of them which is really good so that's that's quite cool you you don't get as much silvering and these crosses and <laughs> lines i mean it looks fairly easy on here but actually it was really <laughs> hard work to get them lined up properly and not sort of uh, break them but they, they do look great when they're done there's something very iconic about those kind of red lines on grey and green. Like I said, just take your time. Don't rush because as soon as you rush, you have a tendency to move the sticker or lift it with your finger accidentally. It just sticks to everything other than the plane. <laughs> so you're, uh, yeah, it can uh, it can be incredibly frustrating. But I just sat down and and, and just calmed myself. <laughs> and uh and just yeah just went sticker by sticker front to back the harrier looks great once it's actually got the actual stickers on it, it really brings it to life i mean the color scheme is really nice anyway but um this really kind of especially the red just brings it up a level these wing ones were easy there was no problem just getting them lined up so your only problem with these ones and again put a softener on it so it absorbs down into the panel lines then the tail again just as easy not too bad at all 
here you can see me putting some of the softener on I just use a paintbrush and uh, just paint it on and it does its thing later on I put a fixer on them just to make sure they're secure properly I think eventually I'll, I'll actually do a spray of clear coat over the entire aircraft and that should really just tie them in nicely once you've done all that using a cotton bud just clean the canopy just get rid of those fingerprints that are sort of inside or any blue tack marks which are used to hold it when I was painting it and then a little spot of super glue around the area where it's going to fix you only need a little bit it doesn't you don't need to use super glue all the way around the, the least amount the better just enough to fix it down And there we have it, there's the Harrier. It, uh, it was a great kit for a starter kit, fantastic. I really enjoyed doing this project and uh, it turned out really nice in the end. That's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I put a link down below for some of the tools I used. If you buy them from there, it actually helps me out and uh, can put that towards you know future projects. So uh, I really appreciate if you could do that. Also, if you could like and subscribe, that'd be great and uh, helps massively with the channel. And it's great to see that subscribers are going up and people enjoying the videos. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. Cheers for now. Tra. Bye.